Hey everyone, welcome back. In this video, let's see how we can handle the list of elements. You would have probably know that find elements written in the list of elements. From a testing angle, what do we need to do with the list of elements? So the first question as you can see here, probably in this screen, given this scenario, we will have to select one of the options because this is the mobile type. So either it is a home mobile or work mobile, fax or whatever. So the selection would be one criteria we need to check it another is the number of elements are listed there in case if there is a requirement saying that we need to list the first seven or first nine or first ten options are we seeing those options here that's another checkpoint so we will see how we can handle this in our appm python code so let's get started this is our agenda so before we start i'll give you a brief about what we are going to cover here if i pull the screen in the last video we have seen how we can automate this part so i'm not going to cover it those aspect here the specifically we'll cover talk about the list of elements so the moment i start typing something on the mobile we can see that there is a mobile drop down is appearing and this gives us list of option so imagine that i want to choose one of these option is it the way it is behaving for example if it is selenium then we will have a select class select class will have will take the web element input and from there we will be able to interact it so do we have any such class here the answer is no pretty simple everything here is an object so as long as we are able to identify that object under a certain hierarchy then we will be good so that's one option so let's assume that another requirement is that whatever the option that is showing is it showing correctly let's say that there are nine elements if i if i count it correctly one two three four five six seven eight element are we seeing the eight elements visible in are the eight elements are visible so this other check we can do it but in order to do that we need to interact with python on the list uh, list side of collection right so we will be interacting with the python as well as we want to understand what is our test objective so let's get started so the previous code we have written so far will invoke the application and will get us to the screen that we have seen just now so let me just quickly run it and then show this to you so that we'll be able to interact with the list of elements further so this is going to launch the application so the pretty much the code that we have seen already there it's not uh, anything uh, new so it's going to access all of this option and then go into the favorites it's going to click this plus symbol select the phone option and it is going to select the phone and it's going to enter some phone value as soon as it enters there is a mobile drop down is coming so this is where we want to start from here right and it going to list that yes so it stops there let me pull the screen in the appm console if i go in here and if i try to attach this attach this screen so what is our intention here we need to interact with this list of elements so if i inspect the first element this is giving me certain object so if you can also expand it expand coming together all that option that we are seeing here everything is listed and if you look at carefully there is no child element under this one and we have a constant method so constant tag name so the tag names are same and the resource id is also same there is no difference so the only way it varies basically depending on the text attribute if you look at text attribute it changes every time i select the new thing so this is how if i'm able to point this element then it means that it is going to give the return it, it is going to return the list of element because the id is same but we have a different option so when we use find elements it is going to give us a list of elements right so for that purpose i have copy pasted the id already let me go and show you this to you so this is xpath that we wanted to interact with right and here the important aspect is instead of find element we're going to say find elements so driver dot find elements and the first option that you're seeing here because i have used it before this is giving the first uh, find elements by xpath so what is xpath xpath is xpath is here you put in this xpath and if you hover on this method the find elements method it is telling me that it is going to re return the list of elements right let me save this as list of values and we don't we do not need to worry about what type of uh, value that we are storing that's a that's a way python works 
and we have this option now. So what is our next step? Let's assume that I wanted to count the number of number of options that are shown here, right? How do we count that? So the method in Python is there is a length method. It needs an object. That object, iterable object is here. That object is nothing but list of values. And let me say that I want to print this out. If I print this out and whatever value that we're going to see there is the list of values that are shown. This is the one checkpoint, right? Another checkpoint. Let's say that I want to print out all of the values that are coming from there. So how do we interact with it? So anything that you wanted to interact as a collection or more than one element, we should always think for a looping concept, whether it is a for, while or anything. So the for loop in Python, for example, for item or value in doesn't accept value list of values. Let me rename this to value. For value and list of values, we wanted to print out the values, whatever value that we have seen, we wanted to print this out. What is that? How do we do that? The indentation is important because as you click on the PyCharm, it is going to, by default, it is landing up there. It is not landing up here. That means that it, this is the block of the code. Okay. So that to retrieve the list of element, this is, we know that it is a list of web element. That web element, what we have seen here is a common attribute that attributes tells us something, right? What was we, we were seeing that so the text attribute is unique that's what we want to retrieve it so the method to retrieve such a attribute is we have a method called value because it's a web element and get attribute what is the attribute that we want to retrieve it is a text attribute so this is going to give us a return the string value that is the name of the element let me say this is element name right and let's say that i want to print this out print element name this is going to print the element name but is it what we wanted to achieve no so we wanted to confirm that whatever we have seen there right whatever we are seeing this option we wanted to select one of the option right so how do we select that as well so again from a testing angle as i said earlier do we need to confirm that whatever the value that are shown there is it expected value or not so we must have some requirement saying that by selecting that drop down option i as a user i wanted to see that nine different option whatever option that are shown there right let's assume that this that is one of the requirement so how do we verify that for that purpose we wanted to have a list already an expected list and then the actual list the actual list will be coming from the value that are coming here but what is expected result? Let me assume that the expected list we don't know as for now because we know that in real time we will know that. But let me keep this as a blank one and then the actual result. Actual list. So this is the way uh, we were syntax you know, declaring a list that's in Python. So I have created expected list and actual list. Actual list. We are getting in the find elements that let me store this as actual list dot append. There is a method called append, which means that in the empty list, whatever value that we are getting in the loop, that is going to append it there. There is an equivalent method also insert, which does insert and append does the same thing, but insert is we can we can be more specific. I want to insert at this index, but here it generally appends at the end. That's the only difference, right? So we what you wanted to append append the element name. So by the end of this for loop, every time it runs, it is going to store that value. It's going to get that value, that value that's in test attribute, and store it in the element name. So this loops keep going. Every value will be getting added. At the end of the loop, we will be able to print the expected, uh, the actual list. Right? How do we print it? Just print actual list so this actual list will print out whatever value that are coming from the for loop right but we will have an expected result also in our case we are going to get the same thing but in reality we will have the expected result what is that user wanted to see that right so if you are able to compare this together and then say yes the actual is meeting the ex uh, expected then the test is false as we have seen in the previous uh, session as it is a by default inbuilt uh, built built in keyword in python which does the comparison so assert what is that we're going to assert it 
and let me assert that expected list equal to actual list so the equal to it's not as assignment symbol equal to will be a double equal to symbol and if not put a comma and say the list did not match so this is a error if the list does not match if it is matching then it we will not get in any error so i hope this is clear how do we interact with this so pretty much this is the same concept that that we do anything on the list of elements in in, in mobile rpm or mobile python mobile mobile world so we'll retrieve that value we wanted to maybe uh, first thing we wanted to confirm the length of the value how many number of lengths are seen and we may want to interest you know print that every single element and then compare that list of elements with the another thing if you know that what is that so i think pretty much this is what we'll be doing in the real time also right so let's quickly run and confirm but this time the expected result is empty the actual result will be the actual result so that we will get a error let's see whether it is running going to launch that it's going to enter some random phone number and it is going to select the drop down once it is selected it's the verification stops there yes so what we are seeing here is a seven different elements right and seven element and then as expected we are getting an error saying that the assertion error which says that the list did not match because the expect actual whether we did not put it but the actual that we know here is this one but again you can have a close look at it whether is it seven or nine i, I think i remember that it is nine let's quickly have a look at how many visible things are showing one two three four five six seven seven only correct so this seven is what we are expecting let me copy this list and put it here and not this one the one that copied let's assume that this is the value we are expecting so it's not copying for a reason let me copy it again now so let's assume that this is expected value and if you see that actual value is coming from here and this will match the actual versus expected because we know that this is the expected value if you run this test now then the test will pass and obviously we will be able to compare it so this is how we interact with the list of elements and i wanted to tell you something more as well uh, the if you look at the ui inspector so this will give you a little more in additional input on this side because it's clearly saying that this is under the same hierarchy so whatever i'm showing it to you this is of the same hierarchy and it is easy so if as long as you are able to locate this one element this is going to be matching with the six different elements that is what we are using the find elements right because the, it will not be unique id because you see here that we are unique we are identifying it with a common name because the class the tag name or the resource id doesn't change on every element so if i tell selenium or rpm that you go and find it it will find six different element so we'll retrieve we'll be able to retrieve it and the way we are differentiating is based on the text attribute because the text attribute is the only attribute that changes depending on the thing and also the index also changes correct so this is how we interact with it let's go back and python let's see whether yes so now we got the seven again element these are the list of elements and also that we were trying to print this this time there is no assertion error because the actual is meeting with the expected value so that's how we do with the list of elements in rpm or selenium or any automation in general I hope you like this video and if you want to support the channel you can do it in a simple different ways you can just share and subscribe this channel thanks for watching